What's up, Las Vegas Hot Radio? It's your girl, Linnell, and I'm here with Rashawn Hammond, and we're gonna interview him and find out what's going on. You'll recognize him when I start telling you all the different things that he's done. What's up, Rashawn? What's up, Las Vegas Hot Radio? How are you? All right, so you guys probably recognize Rashawn from, okay, let's see, he's been on oh, ER on huh? the first season. Uh, he was in Tales from the Crypt. Uh, was it Family Matters? All those fun 90s shows. Yeah. I was on it. All those shows I, I saw I as a like kid. I like I'm leaving something out. Uh, the movie Hook. Hook. With uh, Robin Williams, Dustin Hoffman, uh, Julia Roberts. Uh, an amazing cast. Wow. Wow, that's quite a resume there. So you are working on uh, a documentary, is it? Well, right now I'm actually doing a, uh, a new TV series uh, based off of a uh, independent movie that I uh, wrote, produced, and directed back in 2011 called uh, 24 Hours in Las Vegas. And it's uh, basically about a bunch of friends that come to Vegas and have a, a lot of fun every weekend in Vegas for just 24 hours. And they make away with a lot of bit of, uh, bit of money <laughs> out here every weekend. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Or what do you feel put you on the map or that you're most known for and that you, you really enjoyed the most? Oh, wow. Um, well, I originally got started because my father was a, uh, the lead singer for an oldies group called The Drifters. He was the lead singer for over uh, 40 years. And he wrote a... Um, what was his name? Uh, Clayton Hammond. Okay. And he wrote a, a bunch of uh, big hit songs throughout the late 50s and uh, 1960s. A uh, huge hit that a lot of people at home would know. A song called Part-Time Love, which was re-recorded by many, many artists. When I was about four years old, my father had a big contract at the Bally's. Uh, hotel and casino mm -hmm. and uh, I would come here with my my mom and my older brothers and we would see him perform and big stars like Frank Sinatra or Dean Martin or Tony Bennett would stop by to see the show and at that time I was a huge fan and I still am of Michael Jackson I would dress up in my entire Michael Jackson attire <laughs> with my little glove oh that would be something and to uh, one particular night uh, around the mid 1980s uh, my father's manager, which was also the manager to uh, Mr. Jay Leno of uh, The Tonight Show fame, uh, Freddie Boom Boom Cannon, he was there watching my dad's show and he saw me kind of moving around and dancing. And I went up to my dad and I begged him to put me in the show. And my father reluctantly put me on the stage for about three minutes. And I got up there and saw about a thousand people in the uh, theater and got a chance to do a little bit of my dancing and right afterward they uh, signed me for a contract and from there I did about a dozen or so commercials, uh, big commercials that were shown globally for a lot of brands, uh, Little Caesars Pizza, uh, Skittles, Pepsi, whatnot. And from that, uh, Steven Spielberg, the famous writer, producer, director, uh, saw me and called me in to audition for a new Peter Pan movie he was doing called Hook with Robin Williams, Dustin yes. Hoffman, uh, Julia Roberts. Yes. And uh, after five minutes of being there, it was like pure magic. Uh, he contacted me back about a day or so later and booked me and hired me to be in the feature film just to say one line my very first day uh, on set. He looked at me and smiled and said, son, I'm gonna make you a star. And he winded up giving me over 107 lines uh, wow. for, the, for the movie. I wow. went from working from one day to working for about, uh, I think 115 days on the set. Totally uh, awesome. With just Robin Williams and myself, and the rest is history. And uh, from there, say. I was in a plethora of uh, uh, television shows and series from, uh, ABC, NBC, CBS to uh, Nickelodeon. Sean. I've been a magician uh, since I was a little kid. Just like uh, most kids, I would dabble with the little magic kits you get for Christmas or your birthday. But uh, by the time I was uh, nine or 10 years old, I took it extremely seriously and uh, kept practicing daily. By the time I was 13, 
I was invited to join the Magic Castle Junior Group out in Hollywood, California, which is like the biggest thing for all magicians. Every magician that has a show in Las Vegas or New York or around the world, they started at the Magic Castle. Uh, after a few years of practicing, by the age of 16, uh, I was hired to do about 21 shows there. And I did my, my 21 shows and then got invited to do uh, a show over at Harris Hotel uh, in Las Vegas for about four years and moved over to the Frontier Hotel, then Casino Royale, then the Riviera Hotel and Casino. Then I took my, uh, my act on the road. I've toured all throughout Europe. I've gone to Paris, I've gone to Japan. And uh, to this very day, about maybe about four months out of the year, I take my, my show on the uh, road. And I, I do about 250 shows a year doing my uh, music and uh, magic show with my, my live beautiful birds uh, and exotic geese. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to beg my grandmother all the time to teach me how to play the piano. And my grandmother really didn't have patience to teach anybody. But I was amazed that my grandmother taught Mr. Little Richard how to play the piano. So she taught Little Richard, but she wouldn't teach you? She wouldn't teach me, <laughs> and I actually uh, not only met and worked with Little Richard back in 1994 on a TV series that I was on for a couple of years called America's Funniest People with Tani Katane and David Couillet from uh, Full House. And I was able to sit with Richard for a few hours. He played the piano, and he would kind of crack jokes and talk about my grandmother <laughs> and uh, their time together but at that time uh, Little Richard had a kids album out I think it was called Little Itsy Bitsy Spider and he would do all those classic songs from different uh, animated movies and, and whatnot but I'll never forget we had a blast and then at the end Little Richard had a Bible a little Bible that he gave to me and I he have autographed one. it I have and one. he autographed one for my grandmother he gave me that, one and he had his he had his picture on there yes. and it would be him like yes. that and he was a younger him and he exactly. was exactly exactly i had him i was the flight attendant and he was on uh, my flight i believe where were we going uh to paris okay yes. okay and um he didn't take pictures though he did not. He did not. He did he not. Said, he, in fact, he said, we don't make pictures, baby. <laughs> exactly, exactly. He, I, I couldn't get a photo with him, but to this day, I'm so happy and so blessed. Yes. I still have video footage of him and I together on that yes. series. And we so. had his, his boots. They were in the closet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Incredible times, incredible wow. times. So, Rashawn, funny scene in the movie. 24 hours in Las Vegas. Tell us about it. Oh, wow. There, uh, well, I we, know the whole movie's funny, but the, the funniest whole movie, scene. Um, one of the funniest scenes. Oh, wow. You said something would, about Caesars, I think. Well, we shot a bunch of scenes over at Caesars Palace, and the idea was a young lady that I fell in love with while I'm in Las Vegas for the 24 hours. I think that she's fallen for me, and I'm kind of falling for her. She turns out to work uh, kind of inside the mob. She comes to kill me at the end of the movie. And at the very end, she pulls out a gun Hand and over. tries to shoot me. And myself trying to dodge the bullets, I fall off of the top of the casino and fall a few dozen or so stories into the swimming pool. Oh wow, and that had to be fun to shoot. Or is that some really it, fancy Well, we shot it work? around December. You didn't actually jump into the pool. I did. I jumped into the pool, no stunt doubles. No, there was the some top of the building? There was some green screen work, but I really oh. went to the top <laughs> of the casino. Wow. And I did it five times where I had to jump off the top and land in a little square pool. Uh -huh. And it was very dangerous. And I did it and it hurt a little bit. <laughs> But I think the funniest thing was looking at the you didn't outtakes. Have a stunt I had no stunt double. We did a, it was a low budget independent oh, film. Oh, wow. And the young lady that had to pretend to shoot me, she was so startled because I think she thought the entire time that we were joking about me falling off into the pool. And the outtakes of her looking 
at me and then looking at the camera and then looking down and seeing me fall and and I go face first and hit the water. Wow. And I mean it's it's December here in Vegas. It was like twenty nine degrees. Oh my goodness. It was cold. The the pool wasn't warmed. Uh, That's called break a leg. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So I did it, I got through it, but uh for the actors involved, that had to be the craziest and maybe the funniest thing for them. I know it woke me up. Oh, wow. Well, and I then can't to do wait it. To see it. Definitely. I, definitely. I won't wait. be doing it on the TV show. <laughs> maybe something a little similar, but I'm going to stay a little bit more warm. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to see it. Rashawn, once again, thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Oh, you too.